Oh, this is going to trick a few people. We're early. It's only 20 past six here in the evening, so we're 40 minutes early. Uh, we got to go out later on, so I have to uh, do an early one or not do it until very late. So we thought we'd get it happening now. And, uh, oh boy, there's some stories happening over here which is going to excite some people and really disappoint other people. Situation in Hobart is uh, Goog still here and Jeremy's trying to get there. Uh, Ian Herbert Jones is here. Uh, we've got another bit of a wind coming to keep uh, progressing Elliot towards Australia and guys way over here. So uh, still plenty of action in the GGR fleet. And if you uh, didn't see the um, question and answer post on the, below this, then you probably didn't hear the story about these, my little fingers, you know, <laughs> very important. So if you want to learn about all of the things that my fingers can do, you better watch the, <laughs> watch the question and answers. It was quite funny. And the comments and reactions have been quite cool. So we carry on with the idea of um, me being with you, filming this with a camera, so we're all in this together. And uh, now I'll come straight away to Guy down the back end here. Uh, Guy and Elliot, a bit of contrast. Guy's sailing along quite nicely. 5.7 knots and he's managed 116 nautical miles in the day. He'll be happy with that. And it's being dominated by this really big high pressure system here in the, um, in the Indian Southern Ocean. And that's pretty interesting in its own right. And uh, over here we've got Elliot uh, just just going through this sort of wind shift. So he's got some confusing seas, but it's not super strong winds. He's doing 5.3 knots. This was the things that we always talk about where you've got this northwesterly and all of a sudden you come across a ridge and then bang, it's southwest. But that's a pretty big one. So the transition there would have taken a couple of hours. And um, as I say, the winds are sort of 20, 25 knots, probably three to, well, let's have a look. Should only be three to four meter seas, I think. Um, let's just have a quick look at this. Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. That's probably yeah, that's a, a good three to four meter sea. So uh, uh, he'll be having fun for sure. Anyway, guy's got a lot less down the back there. Pretty straightforward, two meters or something. Um, but all pretty pretty manageable. And so we'll see what happens to this high in uh, in 24 hours on the fifth tomorrow. It stretches out. Wow, that turned into something there. This is the one that we're looking forward to for further along the track. Um, but you can see how that's developed really quickly. There's a lot of wind in there. And uh, for Elliot, it's smooth sailing. For Guy, pretty much smooth sailing as well. That's 24 hours into the 5th. And then into the 6th, uh, we come forward 24 hours. Near enough to it, even more. The centre of the high is not affecting either of them. Guy's got a southerly again, so he's still moving. Elliot will be enjoying this breeze that's consistent. We'll play it, and this big high is just moving slowly to the east. And uh, we'll go forward another day, uh, come forward to the, oh, that's right through to the seventh. So fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, still under the influence of this big high pressure system. Guy, the guy's gonna fall in the hole, slow down a little bit, but Elliot's gonna keep moving, so, so that all looks uh, pretty reasonable. Okay, moving across now to, uh, uh, Ian and uh, Ian and uh, Jeremy, I can pick this up one. I think I'd still give you the overall impression. Yeah, there's a centre of a high here. It's a different one, but it's squashed out a little bit. So Ian is currently doing 5.5 knots, right on the edge of the favourable winds, and uh, Jeremy's doing 3.5. You can see he's got the blues there, so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit quieter. Here's 40 degrees south. So once again, the roaring 40s are definitely underneath the real 40s here, uh, because all the systems seem to be further south than usual. So we'll transition this uh, and see what's going on. We know the sea state's pretty mild with all of this stuff. Uh, right now, so uh, we just hit this and slide it forward till tomorrow. That's a bit late tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow midday. Uh, Ian's looking good. He's got this building northerly, northerly breeze here, and we've got this big sucker that he's supposed to miss. We watched it yesterday, and it's supposed to go down underneath him. Uh, Jeremy's going to pretty much stop. He's going to slow down. He's going to be moving across into this area right on the center of the high, so he's going to slow down. And then I'm going to push this every hour now to just to keep your fingers crossed for Ian, see if it goes under him or uh, it's going to start to impact him. There it is. It's going down very slowly. Jeremy's still not got much wind. But, yeah, the centre of that is uh, moving below Ian. That's in the 30s there. So he's got 30 knots gusting 40. Big C. Uh, the C will be building up there. This has come through to, uh, to uh, two days ahead of time. In two days, he'll be over here somewhere. 
uh, say where the cursor is about there somewhere and and again you can see he's all the, the tough stuff's gone underneath Jeremy's then going to pick up with a bit of breeze because he wouldn't have gone far uh, he's probably going to be around about there somewhere at that stage uh, so no big drama uh, yeah, there's a bit again he'll get 30s just miss it so the next two couple of days for them are uh, pretty straightforward as well uh, but we'll keep an eye on it in case it develops or travels in a different direction. So how far is Jeremy from um, uh, from Hobart? Let's just uh, hit this. Boom, there. Get it down there. Boom, there's one. Uh, there's the other one. So at the moment, uh, 800 miles. He hasn't moved much at all in the last 24 hours. So that's still probably six days, six to seven days uh, for Jeremy. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing him next week sometime. And uh, now for the, or the interesting one for Captain Goog, as you've probably seen, he's still in, in the anchorage here, working on his boat. He was really key. One of his big jobs was put put a, another reef in his mizzen sail so he can balance the boat in heavy weather. And he's been sleeping and, uh, uh, you know, just relaxing a bit, but I know he's got a, a work list there. So mainly to catch up on the winds for him now are a uh, northwesterly. What I will say, before we get over to the other side and look at what's happening, you can... Oh, hang on, that's not today's weather. At the moment, the breeze is sort of okay for when he gets out. It's a, a, a mild southwesterly, but you're going to see a, a, a big change here, and I'll show you what's going to happen. This is it's going to take take good maybe to the, um, get across the, the paddock here, but you'll see uh, he's got light winds coming out, so he's missed some of those you know reasonable sailing breeze is going to be light and fluky he's going to get hooked up in this stuff if you watch the rum line there this is on the fifth this is like uh, by tomorrow afternoon he's due to leave tomorrow morning he's going to come out into really light stuff and uh, then all this mashed area that's going to catch him he's not going to make fast progress uh, this is onto the sixth uh, so he'll just interact with that a little bit, but you'll see it's going to form up into its own high in the Tasman. So now he's got a, a northeasterly breeze, which is good. He'll sort of get sailing a bit for there. That's on the 6th, but then you've got this biz. So he's actually okay. He's going to get northerly, so it'll, it'll push him down a bit. It's not too bad. I was worried it was going to develop headwinds, um, but it's actually looking all right. That's on the 7th and there's a northeasterly slant in it so he should be okay with that but it is light you can see here this is onto the 7th and the 8th it's going to be down here somewhere so it's not going to be a fast trip across and it's right on the rum line it's changing directions so he'll probably have to be south of the rum line anyway he'll, he's happy to be here uh, he's um, uh, getting jobs done and uh, it's an efficient use of his time and he knows you know he's been getting local weather reports uh, they have weather reports regularly on the VHF, so he's happy with that. And here's the story of the moment. Uh, this is the weather now. I'll build this up a bit bigger so you can see it. And this is going to be, this is uh, Simon's payback time. <laughs> so what you can see here is Kirsten doing 1.9 knots. Uh, Abolish is doing 2.9 knots. And Simon's doing 6.3. And if I go back to the big picture, you can see exactly what's happening here. Uh, in, for the future you've got this massive high that's formed uh, in the Pacific side of the Indian Ocean it's split across New Zealand and Kirsten and Abolish are going to get trapped right here in the lee of New Zealand because this is so strong and powerful and so they're effectively what's happened is Simon's managed to hook into the back of this system and this system's going to build and grow and move over to the east and uh, it looks like Kirsten and Abolish are going to miss out on that totally. They're going to be out of touch. It's going to move across. Simon's going to have a great ride. And in the next few days, you'll probably see the current gap uh, extend dramatically. So at the moment, roughly from Kirsten, it's about 360 nautical miles. Uh, it won't be too long and, they'll be, and Simon's likely to be 600 miles in front of um, Kirsten because you'll see here when I... Um, um, put this back I'll blow it up again blow it up again here and you can see what's going to happen I'm going to toggle it through one at a time hopefully that's starting to go so here we go you'll see uh, this big um, uh, you know in the lee of the island there's not much wind down the bottom of New Zealand at all this is by tonight they've got very little wind but look at Simon he's got heaps of northerlies there he'll be loving that 
and uh, this is into the fifth. This is 24 hours away. They've got no wind. Simon's got great wind. So there's one day gone. And uh, we keep moving into the into the six. You can see that even when they start get moving again, they'll get moving a bit, but they've had uh, they've probably lost out 150 miles there. And so on the six, Simon's going to be over here somewhere. He's still sailing, good wind. Oh, they get moving there, so there's a day and a bit lost. And um, that's not so bad. I thought it would have been more than that. Uh, but you can see here, this is into the night of the six and rolled over to the seventh. They've still got light winds, and Simon's got that perfect breeze. Okay, so this is where they'll lose the next day. And uh, that's going through. It's getting bigger. They'll be trapped in that, and they might if they're lucky. But it's still this is this trough is moving down. Okay, um, with no wind zone, but Simon's just loving it. He's got a strong southwesterly, so he's going to just scoot straight up here, and he'll be over this zone at the moment, nearly over the note the um, no-go zone, and uh, Kirsten and Avalis are going to be trapped in this lot here, so they're going to go slow as well, and that's going to continue. You'll see Simon will just squeak across the top here, and it'll, about then they catch up, but they've lost the system. It moves over so fast. Simon's now on the other side of it, but, you know, getting too far ahead by then. That's the 10th. So uh, it could get as bad as a 600-mile lead for for Avalish and Kirsten, and happily for Simon. So uh, that's that. Oh, that's what you call yacht racing. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, we're not sure what's going to happen with this blow if the forecast is is right for that. This is five days ahead, and it may be a zone of headwinds coming up. We'll just run it through. It comes through pretty quick. Yeah, there you got it. So this is the next problem. By then, Simon could be up here with a northerly, and Kirsten and Avalish will be really struggling with headwinds uh, all the way through. In 2018, um, some, a couple of the boats got trapped down here for 10 days. They could not move because this uh, big big high was up here and uh, it, uh, no, this is a low pressure system, sorry, a uh, low pressure system forming. And uh, it was just the end of the world. They got really bogged down. So keep your fingers crossed. We wanna see all three of them in touch with each other and make it a bit more fun. That's about it. So we'll uh, see you tomorrow. And Gug is leaving at, um, Around about nine o'clock local time, uh, we'll put a post up later and just tell everyone um, Ada and Jane and I will be down on the breakwater waving goodbye. So if you're in Hobart, come on down. We'll see.